Hey, my name is Siem Lund. And I'm Inka. And uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about the two-week experiment that we did with the continuous glucose monitor. So basically, we used the CGM for two weeks and we tracked the different foods that affect our blood sugar levels in real time for 24-7. And uh, yeah, in this video, we'll just, you know, go through our experiments and the graphs and uh, all the insights that we gained from this. Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Which way should I put this? <laughs> Which way is the beach? Mm -hmm. Do the flex. <laughs> so I can see where your triceps is. I don't know how to flex. We can see where your triceps is. Oh, there's no triceps. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was expecting more pain. Mm. They didn't even, I couldn't even feel it. Five point three millimoles, which is like a hundred milligrams per deciliter or something like that. Do scan one hour. Do post, it. One hour post lunch. Doesn't work. Seven point two. Okay, so um, this is one of the let's say most average morning cup of coffee that we had, and uh, it's basically just regular coffee with almond milk or coconut milk and as you can see like the spike there's no like any, any significant rise in it it's just in, like a natural response to the caffeine and uh, maybe some of the calories that you get from there but no like real s spike in it mm. and so here i i used the milk and stevia but nothing else so it was just quite plain mix mm. but we did try <laughs> oat milk as well to see what happens and uh yeah as you can see there is a quite a huge like spike in the blood sugar level with the oat milk, regular oat milk with uh, coffee, no added like any real, uh, just a very small calorie amount. Uh, there's no like sugar in it, although there is like this maltose uh, sugar in oat milk that apparently spikes the blood sugar very high. And uh, I did see like a very similar rise, although not that high peak, but uh, yeah, it's quite surprising that uh, to see this. Yeah, and it was the same for me and for you. Mm. And then I actually posted this on my Instagram and I got several responses that that has happened as well mm. to some other people uh, with oat milk specifically. So, yes. yeah. But if you add like all these uh, things that lower the blood sugar, like glycine and apple pectin and cinnamon and MCT powder, then uh, this, the rise is much smaller and it's not that uh, spiking. Yeah, so basically here my idea was to add a little bit of fiber, a little bit of fat, and then, yeah, cinnamon and glycine to balance the blood blood sugar response, and it worked! And you can also see that the exercise, cardio, and weights, both of them uh, lower the blood sugar for you. And uh, here, with the lunch, I basically wanted to see the... Um, what happens if I eat still something after the lunch? Mm. Uh, so I took the lunch and it started going lower already. But then I took coffee and, and an additional protein bar. Mm. And you can see it started like going up second, again. Second yeah, day. it started going up again. Mm. So I don't know if that would have happened without the protein bar or not. But Some Diet Coke <laughs> to see if aspartame is going to spike my blood sugar. And let's get a pre-test first. 4.8. Follow up. 3.0 millimoles. 3.0? What? You went <laughs> well, lower. Well, I've been like, I've been just laying here and I've been fast, fasting as well. So, uh, yeah, I think that's part of the reason. But uh, I don't, I mean, obviously, well, it does show you that, you know, like, does the diet coke isn't going to spike your blood sugar. Uh, I think the reason it went lower is because of the fasting. I haven't, like, eaten anything. So now I'm going to compare the different types of chocolate or different intensities of chocolate 50 percent 85 percent and then kinder which is something like maybe 10 percent no it's a minus minus 10 percent minus 10 percent <laughs> yes uh, so my pre-chocolate blood sugar is 5.6 5.6 Okay, so it's been one hour since I ate two pieces of this 50% chocolate. And let's see what happened to my blood glucose. 6.1. It did rise. How much was it? 
How much was it? It was 5.6. Ah, okay. But basically it did rise. And it's still rising actually, you can see from the graph. Mm. So. But it's not spiking. It's not spiking. Uh, saunas and wine. Mm. So actually we have the two identical days almost. <laughs> uh, first, you had the glass of wine during daytime mm. at uh, <laughs> 3 p.m. Yeah, because I wanted to see it in a fast that so reduce all the other variables. Mm -hmm. So what actually happens with the wine uh, to the blood sugar and it did go lower. Mm. One glass of wine was fine, but see the second picture, the, the middle picture actually. I had mm. two glasses of wine and I went hypo. Yeah, I interesting. Yeah, like, so alcohol doesn't really like spike the blood sugar, especially if you have it like with the empty stomach. So mm. it lowers it. And uh, well, it's not hypo, like you were still, mm. like hypo would be like 2.5 or something. Mm. Like all these uh, are, we're still, we never actually went above these green lines. We were always in the green zone with the exception of the oat milk a little bit in the short term. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we never, neither neither of us actually went like crazy high with the blood sugar. And like, you know, anything below 10 is even still after a meal pretty normal um, or considered quite normal. Like optimally, we don't yeah, like have maybe seven or eight after a meal, but uh, yeah, like even acutely going above 10 for a single meal for a healthy person isn't that significant um, as long as you're still you know able to lower it back down and it doesn't stay elevated for too long mm. um, but the infrared sauna is actually is also something that we both saw a little bit that the I actually saw quite a high like seven after just having the infrared sauna with no uh, food intake like uh, before eating my blood sugar was like seven after the infrared sauna <laughs> which mm. both of us had like a small rise in there Breakfast cereal time. Yes. So I'm going to have a bubble of um, strawberry crunch muesli. Which is, um, yeah, like very typical commercial muesli with carbs. With, with, yeah, carbs and added sugars as well. I'm like low key scared because I haven't had breakfast for years and I haven't, or like at least this kind of breakfast. I'm going to add some berries to make it very healthy very healthy yes um almond milk and measure the blood sugar first yeah <laughs> almost forgot that one so let's see what kind of response do i get for this one okay so 5.1. Very flat. Bon appetit. Thank you. Okay, this is one hour post muesli, and one thing that I'm surprised is that I was uh, I was expecting to feel like a sugar rush or something like that uh, because it's it was sugary muesli, but I didn't actually feel very energized. <laughs> but let's see what my blood sugar says. Seven point six. Seven point six, and it, I guess wow. it's still still rising. No, oh, it's uh, peaked. Plateaued. This is actually one of the highest that I've gotten so mm. far. Okay, this is the granola experiment. So we had granola at lunch, or not lunch, even like in the morning, like 10 a.m. Uh, so it was a regular granola with some berries, and mm. it spiked quite high. Yeah, it did spike. So I, th I think anything with um, sugar, because it, it was this kind of commercial granola, mm. so it had some added sugars as well. Uh, anything with sugar in fasted state does spike it quite quite high and then there is but I think even more significant is this post food crash that comes mm. it's so rapid how it lowers the blood sugar um, but I was interested to find out or to notice here when I ate the granola that I actually didn't feel more energized or like mm. I didn't feel good after the granola I actually mm. felt a bit fatigued but my blood sugar was very high mm. So that was a surprise. I would have expected when the blood sugar goes up, also my energy levels go up. Then there's yeah. the draining effect. 
Yeah, lowers. Again, lowers blood sugar. And then cranberry juice. Regular and... cranberry, like store-bought cranberry juice. Yeah. That also like... But that was the before the dinner, right? Yeah. And uh, that spiked the blood sugar also high. Mm-hmm. Then you had the cranberry juice before lunch, and it also spiked <laughs> mm-hmm. But then I took it, I tested after dinner ah. at the same day, so it actually didn't spike it. Nice. So I had high protein, high fat dinner as usual, and mm. then the cranberry juice. So like protein and fats um, before the carbs lower the uh, blood yeah. sugar response to that carbohydrate. Yeah, and sugar. I noticed this with, in several cases that it... Mm did help to stabilize the post meal like fluctuation mm. yeah and this is my dinner so before dinner i was pretty like low and i ate a bunch of carbs <laughs> so it spiked it uh higher it still didn't reach above nine um, <laughs> <laughs> this is me doing cardio <laughs> so i did uh, like 40 minutes of uh, quite intense cardio like zone two and zone three between there and uh, yeah that plummeted my blood sugar quite quite low uh, the lowest it was 3.2 and um, when i did come back i, I did it like semi-fasted i had only drinking like a one protein shake before the cardio and uh, when I came back, then I like laid on the bed and then I felt a bit like low blood sugar, but uh, <laughs> nothing like super crazy. So that was the only time where I did notice that. But I think it was just because of the you know exercise itself as well, uh, which uh, plummeted the blood sugar. Why do you think it dropped so low at the end or so fast? Well, when I think like, like initially when you start the exercise, then your blood sugar stores or glycogen stores are all still a bit full. And uh, during the second half of the exercise, you basically burn through that mm. and uh, it kind of drops that in that sense. Mm-hmm. So then you go like really fast, you plummet. Uh, but I didn't like eat anything until uh, maybe two hours after that either and nothing was wrong. <laughs> this is a very average day for you and me, so uh, your blood sugar is pretty stable all the time. I, I did notice like even different things like walking a little bit or let's say doing some a cold shower. I usually took a cold shower in the morning that does spike the blood sugar as well a little bit. And um, even like some walking in the acute acute, acute short term, like if you do like a few jumping jacks or mm-hmm. you, let's say run after some chickens or <laughs> something like that, then uh, that uh, raises the blood sugar a little bit. Uh, and you, you, you can see like these different small blimps and uh, th- things are uh, doing the daytime all the time. And that can be all like from the environment. It doesn't have to, it, it may have to do nothing with food. Yeah. And I think this is super important uh, to know that there are so many things that other than food mm. that affects the blood, blood glucose levels. And this was actually one of the, I think the biggest and greatest insights that you get when you're wearing this continuous tracker you see that, oh, actually, I have way bigger response to, I don't know, sauna than food mm. or... Last chance to do blood sugar measurement before the sensor ends. Let's see if it takes you through the jacket. Does yep. it work? Yes. Yeah? 5 by 9. It's rising, actually. Go the walk. Go the yeah. walking. Okay, do it. Let's go. Okay. One hour, 60 minutes. Gone in 60 seconds. 4.5. Wow. Oh. I'm actually pretty low all day. And that's it. Uh, we used the CGM for uh, 14 days and uh, we did, you know, it was fun. It was pretty interesting. <laughs> you can definitely become like a bit OCD about it sometimes, uh, but fortunately, like neither one of us actually did take it too seriously or, uh, yeah, we weren't like 
afraid of the blood sugar rises and it's perfectly natural to see some rises and i kind of wanted to see like some crazy <laughs> yes, graphs that's what i did, yes. <laughs> did those cranola i like i never eat cranola in the morning mm. but i just did it for the experiment i wanted to see like a huge spike yeah yeah it's, it's definitely like a fun thing to do and i think doing it like you know once mm. at least it's going to be good to identify like how does your lifestyle actually affect your blood sugar and uh, you know whether maybe you're pre-diabetic or maybe you have actually full diabetes so um yeah, it's good to kind of know. One thing that I want to emphasize is that these responses are highly individual. So, mm. like, there has been plenty of studies that show that the blood sugar with the same food, with the same basically lifestyle, but just mm. two different people, their bl- blood sugar in response to different activities or food can be very different. So that's why I think it's important to measure it from yourself yes. and rather than just, like, uh, trust on general principles mm. as well. Mm. Mm. Where can people find you online? Well, you can go to my Instagram. <laughs> I think I'm and I actually shared some of these graphs as well mm. there, uh, some of the blood glucose graphs. So. All right. Thanks for uh, watching. Make sure you click a like and subscribe. My name is Seem. And I'm Inka. Stay optimized. Stay empowered. <laughs> <laughs>